An athlete squatted 500 reps in 20 minutes. This is what happened to his kidneys. KG is a 21-year-old man presenting to the emergency room unconscious. Paramedics tell the admitting nurse that he had at least two seizures in the last 15 minutes. KG was a college athlete. Before the summer to his junior year, he had fallen behind. KG broke up with his longtime girlfriend and became depressed. For several months, he limited his training because he didn't want to do anything. When things cleared up, KG needed to catch up to his teammates on his preseason conditioning. He started maxing out his workouts every day. He did several drills early in the morning. He came back later that day to do sprints on a bike. The next morning, more drills, then abs for two hours at night. He moved on to 150 reps each of bench press, pull-ups, and squats. He didn't care how many sets it would take, as long as he could work in all of the reps. As the weeks passed, KG built himself up to three workouts daily, each one at maximum intensity, and he made his way up to 500 reps for each lift. One day, KG's teammates felt something wrong. Before training started, he complained that his urine was red. During this workout, he wouldn't go low enough on his squats. His vision would darken halfway through each set. On his 500th rep of squat, KG struggled, and then he collapsed. Teammates thought he was joking until he started shaking uncontrollably. Coaches called for an ambulance. KG regained consciousness, but paramedics saw him become unresponsive again as he arrives to the emergency room where we are now. Given this history of present illness, there's a few clues as to what's happening. During exercise, the body needs water and oxygen to keep up with the extra energy demand. KG's 500 reps of squat was probably pushing things too hard because parts of his muscles were found in his urine, meaning he has rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdo meaning striped, referring to the look of skeletal muscle, and lysis meaning a breaking down of. An extreme breakdown of skeletal muscle as the tissue leaks its remains into his bloodstream. The kidneys are supposed to filter blood, but they're not supposed to filter muscle proteins. His kidneys are going to become permanently damaged. This can happen to anyone who pushes their workouts too hard, but for KG, this looks like it's happening on top of something else. KG mentioned to his teammates that his urine had become red earlier that day. Another urine sample found hematuria, blood presence in urine, coming from only his left kidney. In humans, the left kidney is bigger than the right, and the artery that flows blood into the left kidney is shorter than the artery that flows into the right. Because a shorter artery means less resistance to flow, more blood naturally goes to the left, Kidney stones or an infection can cause one-sided hematuria, but KG doesn't have either one of those, so something else is causing this. His right kidney is fine for now. Doctors read more in KG's medical record and find that he has sickle cell trait. Trait, not disease. And this explains everything. Sickle cell in general is when the red blood cells become sickle-shaped. Normally, red blood cells are an oval, smooth shape. When red blood cells sickle, they become sharp. They drag on the blood vessel walls. They clump together and they block blood flow, which causes problems. But they're not going to sickle by themselves for no reason, though. They do it because something is wrong with their hemoglobin, which is the protein that carries oxygen. Proteins are made from genes in your DNA. Genes come in pairs. Sickle cell disease means both hemoglobin genes in that person are mutated. If both copies of the gene are changed, then the cells will look like sickles everywhere. Most of the individuals who have sickle cell are of African ancestry. There can be Latinos or there can be Caucasians as well, but the vast majority are blacks. And why did it develop? It happened because if you have the sickle cell trait, then it can protect from malaria which is an infection that targets red blood cells. In a person with sickle cell trait, only one gene is sickle and the other is normal. Red blood cells in sickle cell trait don't sickle unless the conditions are right. And in KG, those conditions were right. If blood has water and red blood cells hold oxygen, but KG has a genetic abnormality that affects the protein that carries that oxygen, then sickle cell trait explains why his muscles are dying and why he has hematuria. The kidneys filter blood to produce urine. A better way to look at this is that the kidneys reabsorb water and that the rest becomes urine. But how do they do this? 
In a small science experiment, salty water is placed in a tube. The tube is submerged in a pool of distilled water, and you'll see that water flows into the tube. That water flows towards where there's salt. In the kidney, filtered blood goes into the medulla. This environment is salty and low in oxygen. Because water flows towards where there's salt, the kidneys use this salty medulla to get water to flow in so that it can be reabsorbed. During exercise, you want this to happen so that your body can have as much water available as possible. What doesn't get reabsorbed is what becomes urine. When water flows towards salt, that salty region becomes dilute. So as more water gets reabsorbed, the kidney medulla becomes less salty. This is natural. The cells here are designed to fight this and pump in more salt. And this maintains the saltiness and makes sure that water can continue to flow into the medulla to get reabsorbed. But when something is pumped in, you need energy to do that pumping. When something needs energy, it needs oxygen to make that energy. And this is where KG's problem happens. The medulla already has low oxygen because that helps it stay salty. KG has sickle cell trait, meaning that his red blood cells have a mutated form of hemoglobin, which is the protein that carries oxygen. This means that the red blood cells that go into the medulla are going to sickle there because of that low oxygen. They clump together and they cause a blockade, meaning that the medulla doesn't get any oxygen at all. No salt is pumped back into the medulla. As water keeps flowing in, the medulla becomes less salty. When it's less salty, less water flows into it, so then water doesn't get reabsorbed, and everything becomes urine, causing KG to lose a lot of water. Individuals who have sickle cell disease or sickle cell trait, because of the sickling, the medulla will be damaged, and its ability to be salty will be compromised. Because of that, eventually, the kidneys will not be able to concentrate urine enough. Losing water means that KG's blood is thicker than normal. Think of it like this molasses. It's harder for blood to flow, causing his overworked muscles to become starved of oxygen as they make more lactic acid as he keeps squatting. This acid causes more of KG's red blood cells to sickle, worsening this entire cycle. If his problems are coming from losing water, then replacing that water is the first step in treating him. IV fluids are immediately started. This will help push more water through his kidneys and help minimize some of the permanent kidney damage. KG is conscious again. He complains to the doctors of sharp muscle aches. Anyone who squats 500 reps is going to have sore legs, but the medical team calls in a surgeon because KG's legs are starting to swell with fluid. Because parts of his muscles were dissolving away, they released proteins and cellular material. The immune system detects this. It thinks that the body has been infected, causing the area to swell with fluid. Usually this is okay, except the muscles are covered by a connective tissue. In the legs, this tissue is unyielding, so pressure builds up in KG's legs without giving any way. If nothing is done, his legs are going to swim in a pool of toxic liquefied muscle. Surgery needs to happen in the next few minutes, because if it doesn't, KG's legs will need to be separated from his body to keep him alive. Surgeons operate to immediately relieve this pressure. And it's done with no complications, but KG's rhabdomyolysis keeps worsening. As the weeks pass, he gets better, he's hydrated, his kidneys were damaged, but they're still working somewhat. At 25 days after presenting to the emergency room, KG is discharged with advice to cool it on the exercise intensity. It's good to exercise, but it's not good to squat 500 reps for no good reason. He can't play any games with his team because he needs physical therapy after his surgery. Recovery is good, and everything seems to be healthy in his life. But 18 months later, KG presents again to the emergency room, this time with fever, hematuria again, and a sharp pain in his right side. He tells the medical team that over the last few weeks, he had become short of breath. He tells doctors that he hadn't done any high-intensity workouts. He hadn't even squatted since the last time he was in the hospital. A chest x-ray shows a widening in his chest. This could mean that he has a problem in his heart or his lungs, or that a cancer has spread to his chest. A CT scan on KG's abdomen finds a tumor in his right kidney, bringing us back to sickle cell trait. When somebody has sickle cell trait, they're not supposed to have hematuria. 
if somebody develops blood in the urine and they are young and they are mainly of African-American descent and they know that they have sickle cell trait, then it is a good idea to do at the very least an ultrasound of their kidneys. And if a mass is found or something that looks like a mass, then that should be taken very seriously. We know that the kidney medulla is salty and it has low oxygen. When something is salty, the cells in that area are gonna have two problems. First, a lot of the DNA is going to be broken because of high sodium. And second, those breaks aren't repaired because of that high sodium. Both of these are normal. It's happening every second in healthy humans. DNA repair is usually restored when kidney medulla cells return to a normal environment. But for KG, he doesn't have a normal environment. His blood cells sickle in the medulla because of sickle cell trait. This blocks blood flow in, so there's less oxygen and less energy for cells to keep the medulla salty. Do you remember that the artery going into the right kidney is longer than the one that's going into the left kidney? Well, this means that less blood flows in to the right compared to the left. This also means that a lot less oxygen goes into the right, so the medulla there is not salty at all. When there's no salt and no oxygen in a place that should be salty with some oxygen, it looks like backup DNA repair, not normal repair, is activated early. Any repair should be good, but in this case, it isn't, because the human genome has natural flaws. 30% of our genome is repeat code. When these repeats are palindromic, meaning that they're the same forwards as they are backwards, normal repair pathways here can have a little trouble fixing things. This means that backup pathways are gonna have a lot of trouble fixing things. When you have too many areas, then the mechanisms that may try to repair any damage in those areas may get too confused because they may not be able to understand, oh, where did this name start from? Was it from the left to the right or from the right to the left? And because of that, those areas may be more likely to be repaired in the wrong way. Hence why those areas are the ones where you can find these mutations that can lead to cancer. Today, we know that a lot of these palindromic repeats happen specifically on chromosome number 22. Deletions here are the most common cause of birth defects. Leukemia also comes from here when things are shifted around from a different chromosome. And next to the leukemia gene, is the one that was affected in KG's right kidney. Samples of the tumor cells were tested. A protein that helps regulate how quickly a cell reproduces was missing. This means that the cell with this genetic defect doesn't stop reproducing. It grows into a tumor in the kidney medulla, becoming the cancer known as renal medullary carcinoma. RMC is essentially what we call renal medullary carcinoma. It is probably the deadliest kidney cancer. It happens almost always in people who have either sickle cell trait or sickle cell disease. In the vast majority of cases, unfortunately, it will present as what we call stage four, meaning it will have spread to different organs by the time you diagnose it. Samples of the lymph node by his heart test positive for the same cancer cells that were found in his kidney, meaning that the tumor has spread to distant sites of KG's body. It's in his lungs now, causing his shortness of breath, and it's on his liver. If it is not treated very fast, then it can take somebody's life within even three months from diagnosis. It is possible that this very intense exercise regimen, which led to all of the other issues, may have also increased the risk for damaging the medulla in a way that can cause RMC. But no matter what, Squatting 500 reps suddenly can cause anyone's muscles to die. Add sickle cell trait and then the rhabdomyolysis is going to be much more intense and it's going to damage the kidneys. Some individuals who are diagnosed with stage 4 RMC and that we have treated that have lived for more than five or six or even more than seven years and they are disease free. What we would love to do is to achieve that for everybody and hopefully one day we will. Before therapy was started, a blood clot suddenly lodged into KG's lungs. His heart stopped beating. 
When someone has advanced cancer, their chances of developing blood clots are several times higher than if they didn't have cancer. Sickle cell trait can sometimes be downplayed as benign because it isn't sickle cell disease, but it's not too hard to put the body in a situation where that sickling can happen. Most people with sickle cell trait never actually develop any problems. So you can have the sickle cell trait and live a very normal life with no issues. However, if you have the sickle cell trait, you are at risk of certain complications if you are taking exercise to an extreme. Everything should be done in moderation. For athletes, sickle cell trait doesn't mean that you can't play. It shouldn't ever exclude anybody. But people need to know that sickle cell trait is not benign. For KG, he couldn't be resuscitated. He passed with all family present. For athletes who do have sickle cell trait, stay well hydrated, take breaks during training, extra breaks when it's hot outside. If anything doesn't feel right, stop what you're doing and tell somebody immediately because next time, awareness of sickle cell trait can save a life for someone like KG. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.